Chapter 10, Another Grandmother. There was much expectation and preparation about the house on the following evening, and it was easy to see that the lady who was coming was one whose opinion was highly thought of and for whom everybody had a great respect. Tanette had a new white cap on her head, and Sebastian collected all the footstools he could find and placed them in convenient spots so that the lady might find one ready to her feet whenever she chose to sit. Fräulein Rottenmeier went about surveying everything, very upright and dignified, as if to show that though a rival power was expected, her own authority was not going to be extinguished. And now the carriage came driving up to the door, and Tanette and Sebastian ran down the steps, followed with a slower and more stately step by the lady, who advanced to greet the guest. Heidi had been sent up to her room and ordered to remain there until called down, as the grandmother would certainly like to see Clara alone first. Heidi sat herself down in a corner and repeated her instructions over to herself. She had not to wait long before Tanette put her head in and said abruptly, go downstairs into the study. Heidi had not dared to ask Fräulein Rottenmeier again how she was to address the grandmother. She thought the lady had perhaps made a mistake, for she had never heard anyone called by other than their right name. As she opened the study door, she heard a kind voice say, Ah, here comes the child. Come along in and let me have a good look at you. Heidi walked up to her and said very distinctly in her clear voice, Good evening and then, wishing to follow her instructions, called her what would be in English, Mrs. Madam. Well, said the grandmother laughing, is that how they address people in your home on the mountain? Oh no, replied Heidi gravely. I never knew anyone with that name before. Nor I either, laughed the grandmother again as she patted Heidi's cheek. Never mind, when I am with the children, I am always grandmama. You won't forget that name, will you? No, no, Heidi assured her. I often used to say it at home. I understand, said the grandmother with a cheerful little nod of the head. Then she looked more closely at Heidi, giving another nod from time to time, and the child looked back at her with steady, serious eyes, for there was something kind and warm-hearted about this newcomer that pleased Heidi, and indeed everything to do with the grandmother attracted her so that she could not turn her eyes away. She had such beautiful white hair and two long lace ends hung down from the cap on her head and waved gently about her face every time she moved, as if a soft breeze were blowing around her, which gave Heidi a peculiar feeling of pleasure. And what is your name, child? The grandmother now asked. I am always called Heidi, but as I am now to be called Adelaide, I will try and take care. Heidi stopped short, for she felt a little guilty. She had not yet grown accustomed to this name. She continued not to respond when Fra Fraulein Rottenmeier suddenly addressed her by it, and the lady was at this moment entering the room. Frau Seesman will no doubt agree with me, she interrupted, that it was necessary to choose a name that could be pronounced easily, if only for the sake of the servants. My worthy Rottenmeier, replied Frau Seesman, if a person is called Heidi and has grown accustomed to that name, I call her by the same, and so let it be. <laughs> Fräulein Rottenmeier was always very much annoyed that the old lady continually addressed her by her surname only, but it was no use minding, for the grandmother always went her own way, and so there was no help for it. Moreover, the grandmother was a keen old lady and had all her five wits about her, and she knew what was going on in the house as soon as she entered it. When on the following day, Clara lay down as usual on her couch after dinner, the grandmother sat down beside her for a few minutes and closed her eyes. Then she got up again as lively as ever and trotted off into the dining room. No one was there. She is asleep, I suppose, she said to herself. And then going up to Fräulein Rottenmeier's room, she gave a loud knock at the door. She waited a few minutes and then Fräulein Rottenmeier opened the door and drew back in surprise at this unexpected visit. Where is the child, and what is she doing all this time? That is what I came to ask, said Frau Seesman. 
She is sitting in her room where she could well employ herself if she had the least idea of making herself useful. But you have no idea, Frau Seisman, of the out of the way things this child imagines and does, things which I could hardly repeat in good society. I should do the same if I had to sit in there like that child, I can tell you. I doubt if you would then like to repeat what I did in good society. Go and fetch the child and bring her to my room. I have some pretty books with me that I should like to give her. That is just the misfortune, said Fräulein Rottenmeier with a despairing gesture. What use are books to her? She has not been able to learn her ABC even all the long time she has been here. It is quite impossible to get the least idea of it into her head and that the tutor himself will tell you. If he had not the patience of an angel, he would have given up teaching her long ago. That is very strange, said Frau Seisman. She does not look to me like a child who would be unable to learn her alphabet. However, bring her now to me. She can at least amuse herself with the pictures and the books. Fräulein Rottenmeier was prepared with some further remarks, but the grandmother had turned away and gone quickly towards her own room. She was surprised at what she had been told about Heidi's incapacity for learning and determined to find out more concerning this matter. Not by inquiries from the tutor, however, although she did esteem him highly for his uprightness of character. She had always a friendly greeting for him, but always avoided being drawn into conversation with him, for she found his style of talk somewhat wearisome. Heidi now appeared and gazed with open-eyed delight and wonder at the beautiful colored pictures in the book which the, in the books which the grandmother gave her to look at. All of a sudden, as the latter turned over one of the pages to a fresh picture, the child gave a cry. For a moment or two, she looked at it with brightening eyes. Then the tears began to fall, and at last she burst into sobs. The grandmother looked at the picture. It represented a green pasture full of young animals, some grazing, and others nibbling at the shrubs. In the middle was a shepherd, leaning upon his staff and looking on at his happy flock. The whole scene was bathed in golden light, for the sun was just sinking below the horizon. The grandmother laid her hand kindly on Heidi's. Don't cry, dear child, don't cry, she said. The picture has reminded you perhaps of something but see, there is a beautiful tale to the picture, which I will tell you this evening. And there are other nice tales of all kinds to read and to tell again. But now we must have a little talk together. So dry your tears and come and stand in front of me so that I may see you well. There, now we are happy again. But it was some little time before Heidi could overcome her sobs. The grandmother gave her time to recover herself, saying cheering words to her now and then. There, it's all right now, and we are quite happy again. When at last she saw that Heidi was growing calmer, she said, Now I want you to tell me something. How are you getting on in your school time? Do you like your lessons, and have you learnt a great deal? Oh, no, replied Heidi, sighing, but I knew beforehand that it was not possible to learn. What is it you think impossible to learn? Why, to read, it is so difficult. You don't say so. Who told you that? Peter told me, and he knew all about it, for he had tried and tried and could not learn it. Peter must be a very odd boy then. But listen, Heidi, we must not always go by what Peter says. We must try for ourselves. I am certain that you did not give all your attention to the tutor when he was trying to teach you your letters. It's of no use said Heidi in the tone of one who was ready to endure but could not be cured. Listen to what I have to say, continued the grandmother. You have not been able to learn your alphabet because you believe what Peter said. But now you must believe what I tell you. And I tell you that you can learn to read in a very little while, as many other children do, who are made like you and not like Peter. And now hear what comes after. You see that picture with the shepherd and the animals? Well, as soon as you are able to read, you shall have that book for your own. And then you will know all about the sheep and the goats and what the shepherd did and the wonderful things that happened to him, just as if someone were telling you the whole tale. You will like to hear about all that, won't you? 
Heidi had listened with eager attention to the grandmother's words and now with a sigh exclaimed, Oh, if only I could read now. Oh, it won't take you long to learn, that I can see. And now we must go down to Clara. Bring the books with you. And hand in hand, the two returned to the study. We'll finish this chapter when we read again. See you then.